Hey, this is Glendon Cameron, and welcome to How to Find and Rent a Warehouse. It's going to be a little different. First section, this is recorded, and I'll be answering questions in the comment section. So if there's something you have a question about, I am going to answer it, and there will be another recording of this that will actually go in the group once it's done. How's that? Something new I'm trying, so work with me. Now, let, let's really get into the skinny and let's talk about a th few things. This webinar is for people with an established business. Because if you're new to resale or you're just really getting into this, unless you have a ton of capital, and even if you have a ton of capital, I would recommend that you take three to four months to just kind of learn the business. Don't spend a lot of money and really, really get your feet wet before you make the big leap. But once again, this is assuming that you have a business that's already making money. You're in your house. You're doing Amazon. You're doing eBay, Etsy, Craigslist, whatever. And you have all this merchandise and it's just literally caving in on you. Uh, there are some resellers that their mates are saying, look, you know, do do that. You have to do something because it's taking over the house and resale can do that. And I see it on YouTube all the time. I can tell whose homes are taken over by their videos because the way the stuff is stacked up. But what you want to do is write a business plan for future growth. One of the biggest mistakes that many people make when going for a warehouse is they go out and try to get a warehouse that's just a little bit bigger or maybe twice the size of what they have. And that's it. You want to think about future growth. You want to think about I'll, I'll give you some metrics. Say your business has 700 items in your house, maybe a thousand. And you're doing six to eight grand gross sales off of that of what you're selling because you're moving only 10, 20, 30 percent of what you have unless you just have a unique situation where everything that you bring in, you just ship out. So, you know that going into the warehouse, you're going to have additional costs. And you've got to factor this in because when I say rent, there's other things. Some locales, you're going to have to get a business license. If you have to get a business license, you're going to have to have trash removal. It's going to be additional cost. So. Whatever the rent is, add 10 to 20 percent additional cost, such as signage. Some places make you get a sign. Some places don't give a damn. There's a lot more that goes into just renting a warehouse than the rent. There's insurance, there's security. So if the rent's a thousand, go ahead and say eleven hundred or twelve hundred is what your rent's going to be with these additional fees. So that's something that no one ever tells you, because when I went out, I was like, hey, rent and oh, utilities. We had a warehouse and one of my neighbors just came over and told me about the gas because we could have turned on the gas because there was these overhead heaters. And he said, don't do it. He said, we moved in and we did it. He said the first month it was four hundred dollars and the next month it was eight hundred dollars. And he said it didn't really get I mean, it kept it from, you know, from you being able to see your breath in here. But it, it wasn't like you were being toasty. So they shut it off and they separated the warehouse and created it a air conditioned portion and the electric bill was like, you know, a hundred dollars a month and it was going full tilt. So those are some considerations that you have to think about. And you have to think about yourself, your health, because warehouses get very, very dusty because the doors, there's always stuff and pollen season gets ridiculous. But essentially there's going to be more cost than just the rent and, you know, and other things. And if you really have some expensive inventory factor in insurance, so your rent could be, like I said, a thousand bucks and you can have another three to four hundred dollars in additional cost. Some warehouse communities have like homeowner, like, you know, warehouse, like a homeowner's fee uh, for, you know, cleaning up lawn maintenance. All that. There's a lot more that you have to ask about. And so when you ask how much is rent, then you ask what are additional expenses that are expected from me? Because there's a lot more to it. So what you want to do is scale your business before you move out. Going back to that figure of six to eight thousand, you want to have a plan in place that when you go into that warehouse, that whatever inventory level that is yielding you six to eight thousand dollars, you want to triple your inventory, get stuff on order, have stuff on the way. So as soon as you go in that warehouse, you are hot. You do not want to go in there. Well, you know, we're going to go. no, because that that a new additional cost is going to be a shock to your financial system 
because it's you know to give you just a clear analogy like if i don't remember the first time you got your car when i was in the military i got my first car i went from always having money to being broke because i thought hey my car payment's 250 no my car payment's 250 my insurance is 120 gas is about 100 going out you know there was all these exist extra costs that came into it that it was like it didn't look that expensive on the surface because i was only because i had my hand over my eye and i was only looking at half the sheet but when i looked at all of the other expenses my car payment wasn't 250 back in the day it was actually 700 dollars when i factor everything in so that's what can happen because you can have extra money and that's why i'm saying whatever you're currently doing Put a plan in place where you can triple your revenues as soon as possible. One thing that will happen is you'll have way more money in your personal life because your business is booming. And then you will not feel that uh, of rent <laughs> so intensely because that's one of the things So when we moved in, we moved in hot. Uh, the rent was of the first warehouse. It was eight hundred and thirty five bucks a month. So we moved in and that very weekend. I put a bunch of stuff on Craigslist and made like 1600 bucks. So we had spent 800 bucks, but we were back up positive 800 bucks. And you got to think like that. And you really, really have to be on top of this because rent is one of the reasons when you go to these strip malls and you will see, hey, there's a new business here for six months to a year. It's gone. And this wash rents and repeat and you see the cycle of all these businesses coming and going, coming and going and coming and going because they don't really understand how detrimental rent can be if you don't have a good amount of term and you're not really thinking of the growth. So and this is another thing, you know, well, you know, you can ask questions for many people who are leaving the home trying to find that small space. It can be daunting, you know, finding that 500 square feet, finding a thousand square feet. It is um, not that easy because they don't build for that kind of business. They really don't build for that kind of business. When you get up to 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, 10,000, yeah, you'll be able to find that stuff all day long, every day. But, you know, from 500 square feet to around 3,000, that's a very hard area to find space. Just a tip, if you're this adventurous and you have the land, there's something called pre cap prefabricated steel buildings. You can buy them for really cheap. If you've got the land and you want to pour a slab, you can and you see these kind of warehouses all over the place because they're so cheap compared to traditional brick and uh, girder construction. Just a thought. You, you can Google that, you know, prefabricated steel warehouses and the kits are like super cheap. I mean, you can have a warehouse for the cost of a car. You know, for the cost of a car, which means if you finance it, you know, you're paying like a car payment on this warehouse. So that's just something else. So too much room is not a problem. You know, if you because that's one of the reasons I said with looking for a warehouse, like say you have a need for 1500 square feet. Once again, plan to push your business to grow to get in that space. And I'll talk about a tip on that to help you with that a little later. Now, this is the big question. How much space should I get? Once again, think in advance. Don't think about where you are now, or where you'll be next year. Think three to five years in advance for your warehouse, because I want you to think about it. going back to six to eight thousand a month and you move into a warehouse. And let's just say because we moved into the first 10,000 square feet warehouse. We only used half of it for six months. But before a year was over, that sucker was crammed. You will grow into the space faster. You can't uh, believe. I mean, it's just like, oh, because when you move in, it's daunting. You know, you, you, you say you say your name you're like Glendon, Glendon, and you're in echoes because there's nothing in there. And it's all this space and it's kind of intimidating. But once again, this is where a business plan comes into play. If you go in there and you have a way that you're going to you know, scale your business up, then it's not so intimidating. It's not going to be like, what the hell am I doing? And you just think. So six to eight thousand, seven hundred, eight hundred items. Now you get in the warehouse, you can take advantage of bigger sales. You can have stuff shipped to you. There's a lot of things you can do in the warehouse that are super, super cool and neat. 
<clears throat> now, this is all about commercial warehouses. And this is my experience of working in a storage unit. Because at one time I had three, four storage units that were close together. There is nothing worse as 930 at night. <clears throat> and you got to go. And there's no bathroom. You got to lock everything up. Get in your car. Go find the service. That, uh, it's irritating. And the more you do it, the more the more irritating it becomes. So it may be more expensive, but make sure you have access to a bathroom close. Make sure you will thank me once, you know, once it hits you because there are people because their warehouses, they don't have a bathroom. And sometimes they go out and get those uh, commercial porta potties. You know, if you're in a warm weather state, I guess that's not bad, but say you're in South Dakota and it's like five below and you got to go out there and do a number one and two with five below. That's very uncomfortable. You know, it may even come out frozen. Just saying. This is another thing that will irk you if you can't get it. You want dock level doors or, you know, and, and the drive in door if possible. You'll see a warehouse that'll have dock level doors. And then someone's built a ramp up to one of the doors because as things are coming and going, you will find it very useful to have a door that someone can drive their car, drive their truck up to you, perhaps. Or if, you know, maybe you have an RV or something and you want to put it in there just to save room. It is very, very useful. We did not have a drive in door. There was so many days that I was wishing because when you're dock height and you're like coming out of a pickup truck or, you know, we had a, a the the Ford E250 van. There's this big gap. You can work it, but it just puts additional strain and effort on your body because I just love. And even if you have a 17 footer Isuzu truck, those trucks are not dock height either. There's about three inches, four inches, depending upon the dock. And it's not as bad. But when you're in a 24 foot straight truck and you just back straight up, put the dock thing there, and you're in and out, it's just so smooth. So just some things for you to consider based on your business. Now, if you're not moving big stuff or, you know. The best absolute warehouse, I would assume, if you can't get dock high, that's one that you can just drive in. Now, if you're going to be receiving stuff, it's going to be not. Yeah, it would be an issue to a degree if you don't have a lot of strong bodies, because I was able to ship out furniture and stuff by myself because we had a dock. It will open up your ability to ship freight much more readily, because if you don't have a dock, most places are going to charge you 95 bucks on the you know to bring it to you in with a truck that has a lift. That's an additional 95 bucks. And some places will hit you with that charge on both ends if you're not careful. Just some things for you to think about, but these are some awesome things to have if you're doing commercial property. Another thing, when you start talking to commercial real estate agents, they speak a strange language of, "Well, yeah, it's only $10 a square foot. It's only Dude, do that. Give me the monthly price because <laughs> then you got to sit there and you got to figure out what it is. Well, you know, this just tell me. I actually got to the point after talking to about six of them. I was like, just tell me what the rent is. I don't want to calculate. I can't calculate, but I'm be off a little bit. Then uh, there's CAM, common area maintenance fees and other stuff that may be on top of that. So th there's a lot of things. And that's why I say just and this is how you approach these people. Hi, I am business owner number A, and I'm thinking about a warehouse. I'm not quite there yet. We're about a year out. These are commercial real estate people. They're used to dealing with long lead times. It's not going to. That's actually going to make them feel that you are real. And say, look, I'm just looking. I'm not ready to purchase, but I just want to get the feel for the market. They will talk to you because I looked for six months using Craigslist and other people. And I actually got my warehouse on Craigslist straight from the owner. So, and you know, he spoke, and that's the thing. When you deal with the owners, they just speak straight. They're like, okay, it's this, you know, the rent's this, the rent's that, that. Strict, easy, breezy. So there is a lot to learn about this. And then you need to go ahead and figure out about licensing. Some places you can get away with a gypsy warehouse where you don't have a license. Other places, they will not rent to you if you don't have a business license. So there's a lot of things that you've got to figure out. And that's why I'm just like, even if you don't have a warehouse, if you think you may need a warehouse for next year, the time to start looking and learning this stuff is now. 
right now because there's so many things that evolve. Because when I got my business license, I did not know that I had to go out, you know, for my getting a business license, I had to already have a trash account. And I'm just sitting there like, no one told me this. It wasn't on the website. I looked, I asked a million questions, and it was just like, I felt like, why are my nuts feeling so tight? Oh, but that was the thing. And, you know, as you go through this and you, you start asking questions, you'll find all of this stuff and you won't get blindsided. Each municipality, jurisdiction, they're all different. There's, you know, it's just like, you know, this county may do it this way. This county may do it this way. There's a lot that goes to it. So just some things for you to know about and to ask. Spend a good two, three months just asking questions because it is the worst thing in the world to sign that lease and then find out that you have to do A, B, C, D. And these things are costly, but you've already signed that lease. You've already made the commitment and you've already given me your check and the check is clear. You are stuck like Chuck. So take your time. That's why I'm doing this you know, webinar so you can figure out where you want to be. Learn your market. This is some mess stuff. I find. I'm glad I took my time. One warehouse, the one I actually was listed with a commercial agents, the one I actually got in, was about $500 a month more than what I paid. But for some reason, four months down the road, it went down to $835. Don't know why I don't care. <laughs> but this is some of the stuff you will see. You'll see prices go up. Uh, just a quick lesson on real estate for you. You see vacant shopping marts uh you'll say vacant malls and grocery store places and they've been vacant for years and you will walk up and you'll try to make a deal to the owner and they don't want your money and i'm gonna tell you why it depends upon their real estate portfolio if that property is owned by a one one person and they need some money they're very very malleable but if that piece of property is part of a large real estate portfolio they may be leaving it empty on purpose to offset revenue from other stuff as a tax write-off yeah that's why you know it's you know when i finally the guy explained it to me it's like if you really understand real estate you make money if it's empty and you make money when it's full depending upon your real estate portfolio because one place i was trying to get in when i the guy actually explained it to me the portfolio had 600 properties in it with the cheapest property being four million and out of that, he told me 80% of that stuff was rented out. So he's like, you know, we're not in like a hurry. You know, if someone comes and meets our price, fine. But if we do a discount, then we can't take that stated rent off our as a loss. So that's why you'll see like some crazy rent prices. Like, wait a minute, why is this place 5000 and this place is the same, but it's only 2200 There's so many things that go on in the real estate world. That's just it's. That's why there's specialists. That's why there's commercial real estate agents and there's a residential real estate agents because the two animals are so different. That's why you got to learn your market. You know, if you're in a smaller market, you're more than likely going to be meeting with the owner, which is going to be easier to deal. If you're in a large market, frequently you're going to be in dealing with their agents who have an agenda. And, you know, in their agenda, and they're not going to tell you what it is. They may just talk to you and have no intention of renting that property because they need it as a loss. Uh, to a uh, net loss to write down on their taxes. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on. Have a strategy in mind. You know, just like, hey, I need space. You got to really, really have a good game plan. You, you, like I said, three to four times what you're already doing, you want to have a plan to get there as fast as possible as soon as you move in. You want to just blow it out. You do not want to waste time. You do not want to grow in slowly because now you have a new expense and... Some landlords are cool and they won't jack your rent. Others, they will go up every lease term. And uh, I didn't put this in there, but typically most places are going to get you for three years, uh, three to five. That's where a lot of stuff's going to be. Some will do 10. But understand, if you were rolling and the market changes, when your lease is up, your rent is going up <laughs> and it could go up. Uh, one of my neighbors and one of my friends in the adjoining park, he was there 10 years. He was paying 6000 a month and things were really good when he had to. And he could he could not get out of there because he had a major project. It, it would just been too much disruption. His rent went up forty two hundred dollars. So he went from six thousand to ten two. 
So these are things you have to consider. That's why you want to. He had the money. And he's like, I could pay it. But it's just like, man, that, you know, and he just tweaked his business some more to make more income. So that wasn't like he was losing that money. But these are things you got to think about, because once you get in there, once you build your business, once you start making money. Understand chances of the rent going up are very, very good. Just know that. Keep that in your mind. And before you get in there, think of new services and products that you can sell because now you have the space. You can do something different than what you're doing because and we used our warehouse to store, to ship. And we had a fabrication area where I would remake furniture, stain stuff, all that. So there's a lot of things that you can do. And you, you got to put all this stuff together in your mind before you move in. Now, as I said, start looking a year out. Because there's so much to learn. And once you talk to four or five agents, owners, you'll start to kind of get the gist and you'll be more comfortable and you can ask better questions. And just keep everyone's cards because you can ultimately go back to whoever you went to. Because once you get more knowledge and it's like, oh, the market's really soft. And you can do like uh, property searches. You can go online or, you know, hey, who owns this? Uh, I had a friend who had CoStar. I was able to get all kind of information. So if you could find out if it's in a portfolio, you can find out if an owner owns it. There's, you, you get more information. The more information you have, the better position you are for negotiations. Much, much better position. And then start just asking stuff. It's like, hey, are there any free rent options? This is business. They're used to this. Ask, uh, is it possible that the deposit requirement will be waived? I was able to get into one. No problem. I just say, hey, you know, I move in the day if I could just pay rent right now. <laughs> I mean, just first month's rent. That's all I got. And it's like, OK, you don't know until you ask. And this is a real very important. Some places will let you do it. Some will not. And this is very important. This is one of the ways I said I will help you out a little later. Can you sublet? Now, this is a way that you can make some money. Like, say, you know, the only thing that available to you is 5000 square feet, but you only need a thousand feet. What you can do is contact a moving company, small one, and say, look, hey, I'll let you rent like most of my warehouse because movers need space. Uh, you'll have to sign a contract. You'll have to have insurance, but they can be literally paying your rent and you're in there working rent free. Or you can sublet to another business. There's, you know, but the thing is, you want to have that option in your lease. And you want to have it in there that's like, hey, is it possible for me to sublet some space? I will be totally responsible, you know. Just ask. Some places will. Some places will not let you do it. Now, <clears throat> this is where using your own tribe will help you. You may know someone that knows of a deal, but because you have not articulated what you're looking for, you haven't talked to them. You haven't put it out there in the universe and said, hey, universe, I need a warehouse. You may have someone in your circle, someone you talk to every day that knows how to help you out. But because so you got to like, hey, I'm looking for a warehouse. Just put it on Facebook and you may have to put it on Facebook, you know, like put it on there two or three weeks, let people know, send out emails and just see what your network can do. I mean, your network could hook you up. You may have someone, you know, that has a warehouse and they may cut you a sweetheart deal. So put that out there, put that out there, because that's how I actually ended up subletting because I was just like put out into my network. Hey, I sublet some space for six months. And I had someone in. And that's why I said it was in my contract. I was able to do it. And I didn't have to worry about it. Because landlords are pretty cool as long as you follow everything in the lease. Even if it's not really a big deal, if you do it and don't ask permission and they find out, they tend to get a little irritated because they're like, what is this mofo going to do next? I mean, oh, if he just came to me and asked, we just annotate the, the lease. That's no problem. But, oh, no. I, I mean, they may kick you out or jack you or something. I'm serious. They may shank you. No, they won't shank you. They would just uh, throw rocks at you. But these are things that you have to know about to ask and to know how things go. Because I was in the, let's see, the first warehouse, three warehouses, and the last two were the last two. Yeah, the last two were the last two. That's pretty cool. But, I, you know, I learned a lot on the first one. I learned a lot on the second and the third one. And when you go in and you're talking to the people like, you know what you're talking about? It's just an easier conversation. And then that's when you can shank them with the concessions. Can I get free rent? Because the big warehouse, I was able to get six months free rent because I went in and it's like, oh, we're going to have to paint. We have to do this. Only thing we did was add new lights. That took a week. That was it. 
So I was in the, yeah, and it needed it too because we were making sales, but we would have felt that payment. I mean, you know, just I did the first rent first month and last month and then six months and then the rent did not kick. And that was actually on the contract. I have to send in that first rent check. So these are things that you can rig. And, you know, the thing is, he just cut me a deal. He was desperate. And I learned something else from this deal, because when I wrote out my check, the warehouse was in a trust for his kids. I didn't find out until later that he had 30 of those warehouses in a trust for his kids. So the kids, you know, one was a doctor, one was a lawyer. They didn't have to work. No, actually, one wasn't. She was a stay at home mom. But I just started calculating because the guy was he was he was old. He was like 80, 90 something when I met him. I think he's still alive. But these kids had 30 pieces of commercial property paid off in a trust. How freaking awesome is that? So I know what I was paying. I mean, they may have been literally getting 250000 300000 a month in rent payments. Split between two people. <laughs> yeah. And he told me he couldn't sell stuff. He said it was a revocable trust. So the way I think it was set up is it would pass through to their kids. And this is just one of the things you learn about business. Because, you know, when I'm sitting there filling out, it's like the trust you know, and I start asking questions. And this is one of the things about when you start a business, you get this financial education, this education on life, and you just learn about so much stuff that's so cool. Now, another thing that you should do, and I talked about playing a big sale, a big push, a big event, a listing party, like say you're listing 600 items a month on eBay, you're going to like, hey, we're going to list 2000. And this is another way. One of my clients recently had some limits and, um, I just said, will they limit a new account? I said, well, open up two more IDs. And they were limited, but they gave him enough room for him to sell his stuff. So just, you know, a little tip for you if you've got the limitation problem. Because they will allow you to have other IDs. I don't know if they're at the point where they're sharing limits between IDs, but who knows. So just some food for thought. Now, this is the part <laughs> I'm doing last, because this is the part that's really going to apply to most people. The alternative warehouse are you down for a swim that would be a swank ass warehouse you work in there slide the doors out go running push yes we're talking about housing uh, i've helped quite a few people do this and we're going to talk about the legalities of this too if your business is mostly online you can rent a big house for perhaps half a third of the cost of commercial property and have an extra bedroom if you want for two years, the UPS, USPS, and FedEx, a guy came to my house every day. No one said a word. I mean, there was a whole bunch of shit going to Amazon, dropping stuff off. Take, I mean, if this is the problem with doing certain businesses in a resident, people will take note because I had an older neighbor. She She's like, oh, you got a lot of trucks coming by because your neighbors be known. I was like, yeah, I run a business out of the house. Oh, really? What do you do? Blah, 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 blah. Hey, you want to buy some? And at that point, her nosiness dis, dis, uh, dissipated. It's like, oh, he's trying to sell me something. She was not <laughs> interested at that point. <laughs> and that went on for years. So this is something you can do and still be legal. Let's, you know, because I'm not trying to get you in trouble or want you to do anything legal. So most places like residential property is not to be used for business. But if you've got a bedroom in there and you just work from home, it's a little gray. It is. But are you going to go to jail for this? Nope. Are you going to have people come? <laughs> We're coming. In? Nope. As long as you handle your business and do not create a disturbance, no one's ever really going to know and no one's ever going to bother you. So now even talking about even more legal, you can go down and just say, hey, I run, I have a website and I run it from home and they're going to give you a business license for your website that you run from home attached to that address. Or if you want to use it, use your registered, you know, I mean, the registered agent's different and you're you're legal. You're straight up legal. You're doing it now. <clears throat> This is how I would do it and advise my people that when you're renting the house from the landlord and you just like, look, yeah, you know, um, you have any problem with me running a home based business from there? You know, I do stuff on eBay, Amazon, I have a website. Most of them are like, no, 
I was like, really? What do you say? That, and you just went ahead and then announced your intentions of what you wanted to do and put a bedroom in there, put a bed in there, and you are legally renting that place. See the technique of how you do it. Because you're being honest, because everyone's like, oh, no, I don't want you are being honest. You just say it, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, and sometimes I work, you know, work from home a lot. Long as your credit score is good and you have the money in the bank to pay the rent, no one gives a rat's ass. No one don't care. As long as you are paying that rent on time, he or she is not going to care. May even buy something from you. So legit, easy and breezy. And they expect home businesses to come into the Department of Revenue now. It's easier than now. Back in the day, you used to look at you kind of weird. It's like, oh, you work from home, huh? If you've noticed, sometimes we go in the neighborhood, you'll see a house with two mailboxes, one real big one and a little small one. There's people working from home and they had to like create an office in their home for le- just crazy stuff. Just crazy stuff. Now you don't even do all that. Now let's talk about the home. You want a garage. I've uh, written a comment where someone works in the basement. They got, you know, if you can have uh, drive around access to your basement, that's great. But the two car garage, you can do so much in that garage. So much. You can set up your shipping space. You can receive inventory. You can ship out inventory. You can do a lot. You can do a ton. But, the, you know, it's just awesome. As few stairs as possible. And, um, it's just cool. If you are uh, working out of the basement, that's what that should be. Drive up access is nice. Uh, my house, I was able to drive up to the basement door between the two pine trees. Makes a big difference because say, just give you an example. Say you got the van or truckload of 30 boxes, right? And you have to walk 40 yards. Doesn't seem like a lot, right? After that third, fourth box, you're going to start feeling it. You're going to like, good Lord. So, you know, just to keep the wear and tear on your body and for you not to be working harder than you have to. These are things that you should really, really think about. Steep driveways can be an issue because <laughs> uh, they will put your vehicle where the nose is down. So when you're like reaching in and over the gate, it makes it harder. Just things because remember, if you're doing this, you get to pick it so you don't have to pick something bad. Level driveway two car garage. And, you know, preferably the best thing is a ranch. The best thing is a ranch because typically you can set up one room as your office. You can set up a bedroom. You can just use the house for storage. I know someone uh, who will remain nameless who has uh, an Amazon business and a house. I don't know who owns the house. I think it's a family member. But there is nothing in that house but books. Nothing in there. There is a ranch with a basement. There is nothing in that house but books. And he goes over there every day because he has so many freaking books that he's shipping out 30, 40 books every day. That is his life. Out of a house. So there's a lot that you can do. And the thing is, when you start opening your mind, it's like you're not going to put furniture in there. You're not going to have to do the dining room, living room and everything. I would say do the bedroom, do the office and do a kitchen. But you have an incredible amount of room. So say you're in a 2000 square foot house. That's a lot to space, man. And you can run a fashion business easily out of a house. You can run a jewelry business. You know, stuff that is small, easy to ship. You can run a lot of that stuff out. I would not suggest a house for furniture or appliances or stuff like that because the wear and tear between the door jams, the stairs, you're going to tear it up. But if you're just doing like books, jewelry, you know, the stuff you're typically doing, it's not going to be a problem. I know someone that has $500,000 worth of inventory. It ain't the book guy. It's another thing. In his house, in his garage only, $500K. Uh, does about $100K a month in sales from the home. One of my clients. And it's just really remarkable what he's doing. So you have to really, really think about where you want your business to go. Because, all right, say you do this house, right? And you just rent from year to year. Say the house is. The deal between you getting a commercial warehouse because you're almost there, but you don't have the money or you don't want to spend the money. And you don't really know. It's a one year deal. So you're in and you're out. Enough, you know, as long as you don't tear up the house, as long as you paint the wall, you know, don't do anything crazy. It's really not going to hurt you. And, you know, just saying, if you were with a family and 
you got a wife and kids and you might now have a new man cave that's all yours you can run around the house going yay naked if you want to and no one's gonna know because you know it's your business place just food for thought what did i tell the neighbors not a damn thing <laughs> just kidding <laughs> don't get too detailed just like hey or, or you know work from home or run a home-based business blah 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 show them some samples and stuff like that I uh, would not be inviting people over and uh, pretty much it. Now, if you look at Breaking Bad, Jesse making like, what, 500000 a month and he has no furniture, just you know, a futon in the living room, some stuff like that. So definitely just be nice, be polite. And also this gives you now, if you're like a reseller, this gives you two homes to have garage sales at. So instead of having the four a year, you go up to eight a year. It's just something to think about. Just something to think about. Okay, at this point, uh, more questions and uh, we'll jump into it.